morning, my lovely viewers, and welcome to Real Talk. I am your host, Eve Nyaga. So you can be good at something, but you may not have the person to take a chance on you or believe in you. Today, we will be talking about the chance Akili Dada, in partnership with Yale Young African Scholars, is taking for young women. You can be part of this conversation by sharing your comments, sending in, um, just telling us where you're watching us from, or just say good morning to us. You can send in those comments on IsHaQt on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, or you can reach me directly on my social media platforms at Eve underscore Nyaga one on Instagram and Twitter and Evelyn Nyaga on Facebook. So our guests today, we have Kid from Akili Dada and Lucy from Young Yale African Scholars to share with us more about their respective organizations and how the partnership is impacting lives of young women. Then later we will be joined by one beneficiary from the Yale Young African Scholars and a tutor, an instructor, sorry. So welcome ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm honored to have, to have you with us today. Thank you. So kindly introduce yourself. My name is Lucy Apia from Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm the Associate Director for the Yo Young African Scholars Program based mm -hmm. in the US. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Thank mm -hmm. you for having us. My okay. name is Kate Kema. I manage programs at Akili Dada. Mm -hmm. Akili Dada is a leadership incubator for girls and young women, mm -hmm. and we have been programming for girls age 13 to 35 for the last 14 years. Okay, that's nice. So um, why did you decide to partner with um, Yale Young African Scholars? All right. Um, so Akili Dada is very intentional about creating opportunities for girls and young women, especially from underserved communities, to mm -hmm. access uh, leadership roles, to access skills development. And so we're very excited and delighted to partner with Yale Young African Scholars Program mm -hmm. to especially give academically brilliant girls and boys an opportunity to be able to access leadership, mentorship, and help, and help them transition especially effectively to universities and colleges abroad. Mm -hmm. So in partnership with the Yale Young African Scholars this program, we're really delighted to make sure we have high impact, a high academic low impact, uh, uh, low income students be able to access quality education uh, mm -hmm. beyond their secondary school, which is why we're really excited and eager to partner with them because they have this pool of mentors and scholars and educators who can be able to uh, to give these students these opportunities. Okay. So this year we'll have a hundred students coming from uh, 33 different African countries mm -hmm. for a current convening that's happening to the MPESA Foundation yeah. just to be able to buttress this partnership and to make sure we are effectively giving opportunities to students uh, across the continent. Yeah. So you've talked about um, Akili Dada is only just focuses on young women, right? Yes. Um, but Yale, on the other hand, is um, for both young boys and young women. Yeah. Young okay. Young girls, yeah. okay, just tell us a bit about that. Um, so the Yo Young African Scholars Program is a summer enrichment ac and academic program for secondary school students in Africa, mm -hmm. as for both boys and girls. Um, the objective of the program is to give students access to college, and so every year we select 300 students and host them in three different countries um, to expose them to college application process, financial mm -hmm. aid application process. Um, every year they get to interact with Yale professors and Yale undergrad and graduate students mm -hmm. um, to learn about the whole process of going through, the whole process of applying to college. Yes. Um, we also have um, an SAT consultant with mm -hmm. us who takes them through the SAT preparation um, mm -hmm. just to get them ready for college. Okay, so why did you choose Akili Dada specifically? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I think as Kate rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Akili Dada is known for the impacts they are making in um, youth education. I know that they focus mainly on girls, but we thought that because of the work they are doing in Kenya and mm -hmm. because they are recognized, mm -hmm. be, they'll be a good partner for what we want to achieve. Um, so in every host country, we have a local partner, and we thought that for Kenya, Akili Dada was the best okay. partner to do the job. Uh -huh. So in about how many countries do you have this program? Um, so the program is for students from all over Africa, mm -hmm. but we have local partners in three countries at the moment. Yeah. One in Ghana, one in Kenya, and then one in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But we have our students coming from all over Africa. This year, we received applications from 54 countries, oh. and um, we have students from 41 countries in the program at the moment. Mm -hmm. But here in Kenya, we have 33 countries represented. Okay. So, um, Kate, could you yes. kindly tell us... Um, 
the process mm -hmm. through which someone can be part of this program Absolutely. and also Akili Dada. So mm -hmm. every every year mm -hmm. uh, the Yale will actually, we don't handle the recruitment processes mm -hmm. so once the application goes live uh, we try as much as possible to disseminate the information through mm -hmm. different media, schools etc. Uh, the application is very uh, student driven so a student has to actually apply. Sometimes they will have recommendation letters written by either their teacher or their tutor or a mentor. So the application process is very rigorous. We've had the privilege of five of our students who have actually gone through both the Yale Young African program and the Yale Global Scholars program, which Lucy will allude to in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So the application process, students are, uh, have to apply for themselves, yeah. so a teacher or a parent can be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But as a Kili Dada, we're very intentional to share these uh, opportunities once they become open, so that we can have as many students be able uh, to apply. We try as much as possible to also make posters for schools that may not have access to internet, just to make sure that we are having a good mix of both rural and urban students applying for this program. The program is fully funded, mm -hmm. so we try as much as possible to encourage students at a very early age to also get travel permits, yeah. especially if you're maybe in Kenya and you're going to either the Zimbabwean or the Ghanaian uh, convening, it's important that you have travel documentation. So that's one of the uh, challenges that students might face. Maybe you're already selected, but because of lack of um, uh, travel documents, you don't be able to access. Yes. But we're really excited that we now have the convening happening in Kenya, which means that more students can actually yeah, be able yeah. to access it in country. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about Akili Dada for just a minute. Mm -hmm. How can um, um, young women be part of Akili Dada? Absolutely. So Akili Dada, as I mentioned, we have four programs mm -hmm. which specifically work with girls young age 13 to, in, to 17. Those are girls in high school. Yeah. So we give scholarships primarily to academically brilliant girls who come from underserved communities. Mm -hmm. We work with partner schools, uh, predominantly national schools. Mm -hmm. However, over the next few years, we are very intentional to give scholarships in Turkana and Kilifi, yeah. just also to be able to recognize that those are areas perhaps where the more challenging you know, or the hard to reach girls are. Yes. So we're going to be scaling our programs and specifically focusing in those two counties. Mm -hmm. uh, again, our applications, are, we are a feminist organization, <laughs> so it's really important that the student actually applies for the scholarship. Mm -hmm. We have a very rigorous process to just make sure we're also giving access to uh, the, uh, the scholarship to the right girl. We do work with parents and teachers as well, so mm -hmm. if maybe you're a teacher and you're watching or you're a parent, we also have uh, programs for parents because we think it's really important that both parents and teachers are speaking the same language mm -hmm. uh, of, of empowerment and you know just self-validation for their daughters especially so we do have those programs uh, and we also run something called the Waschana Africa Summit which is an East African Girl Summit which has just recently concluded uh, yesterday okay. again this application uh, one is program open. to the next <laughs> <laughs> yes this this program is open to young girls in East Africa who are excited and interested to pursue courses in science technology engineering and maths mm -hmm. uh, we bring 60 girls in Kenya and we have a rigorous leadership academy where we expose them to tech. Uh, we were partnered with iHub a few days ago and the girls were taught uh, robotics and how to build smart cities. Okay. And then we also try and couple all of our learnings by a site visit because we mm -hmm. want to also change the methodology of how we teach girls by making sure we also expose them to learning visits and just yes. come to experience what it is uh, to say be a journalist or to be an engineer uh, in different spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, young women, especially in university, um, and uh, uh, maybe uh, in colleges can also apply to a Kilidada to be a mentor. For us, we are very intentional to have the process of women mentoring other women. And for us, mentorship doesn't have to be age, con there's no age constraint in how you can be able to mentor. Yeah. For mentorship to effectively work, you mm -hmm. have to mentor and be mentored. So we have an application process that opens every November mm -hmm. uh, for mentorship for each of our programs as well. So young women can also apply. For university students especially, we have something called college prep. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is an application process just before they graduate school. Yeah. We have platforms where we can have conversations with them about how do you present yourself for an interview, mm -hmm. how do you write your resume, and then no, we do important. more interviews mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure that as much as you have the right skill set, that you're also able to present yourself and, and explain to an, uh, an employer why you're probably the best person to employ. Yes. We also do run a fellowship program, so mm -hmm. we incubate young women social and Entrepreneurs. Again, that application went live, I think, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we'll specifically be work, working with young women in three counties, in Tarakaniti, in Kisumu, and in Kilifi. So mm -hmm. if you're women age 25 to 30 who are running a social enterprise uh, that's not been in existence for more than two years, mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to us at uh, www.akilidada.org. 
www.akilidada.org or write to us at info at akilidada and we can share the application mm -hmm. process with you. Those yeah. are so many opportunities that you're giving young women. Yes. That's interesting and very good. Thank you. Yeah. So um, back to you. Mm -hmm. About how many months does the program take? Um, so the program runs for about eight days, mm -hmm. um, but before every year, sometime in October, we launch the application. Yeah. Students apply. You have to have strong academic abilities, mm -hmm. um, demonstration of leadership. Um, you also have to retarget high achieving low income students, or what we call HALI. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be in this category to apply for our program. Yeah. Um, and then July, August, we run the program in three host countries, but each session is just about eight days. Mm -hmm. And we know that eight days is not enough to prepare yeah, someone yeah. for college. So at the end of the program, we pair our students with, with mentors. Mm -hmm. um, it's a year-long mentorship, yeah. you know, to help them go through the whole college application process. Mm -hmm. That is why we have Akili Dada for mm -hmm. um, our Kenyan participants, yeah. and we have um, for non-hosts, participants, we um, have an online mentorship program for them mm -hmm. where they are paired with Yale undergrad and graduate students who mentor them for a whole year throughout mm -hmm. their college application process. Mm -hmm. I must also add that um, our program is not possible without our donor, the Higher Life Foundation, mm -hmm. which is based in that Zimbabwe. Yes, um, this was founded by Strive and Titi Masiyiwa, a Zimbabwean philanthropist, um, and they sponsor the program. Yeah, I'd like to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what happens after these eight days? Mm -hmm. Yes. What happens after I go through these eight days? How will that have impact for me? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm glad we have one of our students here. Yes, um, she'll she share her experience with you. Yeah. She'll tell you um, what the experience has been like. For It's only been three days, mm -hmm. and um, she has Super. so much to share. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the eight days, as I mentioned earlier, our students are paired with mentors. Yes. You know, so right at the end, you have someone who help you come up with a plan, when to write your SAT, when to start working on your essays, you know, right up until the point where you submit your college application. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the eight days, they go through a whole year mentorship program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, at what point will they get the opportunity maybe to go to Yale? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm thinking if we are talking about Yale, mm -hmm. there's a relationship to Yale University, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that question. <laughs> um, so one of the things we do during YAS is to bring together other universities. Yes. So the program is not necessarily about Yale. Mm -hmm. This year we have university reps coming from Johns Hopkins, mm -hmm. University of Rochester, yeah. Ashesi University, mm -hmm. NYU Abu Dhabi, African mm -hmm. Leadership University. Um, University of Columbia, you know, so we have university reps from all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, because we want the students to be exposed mm -hmm. to the whole application process, not just for Yale, yes. but for all these other institutions. So the target is not for, you mm -hmm. know, the idea is not to get students to Yale, mm -hmm. but to help them apply to college wherever they want to whichever go. College yeah, whichever, they want college, to go yeah, whichever college mm -hmm. they want to go to. Um, so from Kenya, how many Kenyan participants do we have? So this year we have 33 out mm -hmm. of the 100 uh, students currently mm -hmm. being convened at the Mpesa Foundation. We have 33 Kenyans. Mm -hmm. yes. 33 so, Kenyans? Yes, 33 okay, Kenyans. And Akili nice. Data is very intentional to walk this journey with them mm -hmm. uh, as, throughout the program and as they transition to colleges and university mm -hmm. just to also buttress. It's really important to support them during the application process. Mm -hmm. Most of them will be choosing to study abroad yeah. and so having conversations with them about culture shock or just awareness of uh, if say for instance you're going to the UK, how yeah. to choose an oyster card when you're going <laughs> through the subway. It's really important to walk that journey with mm -hmm. them and also just make sure that they have an ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, that's supporting them so that they can also thrive wherever they decide to go and pursue their further education. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, do you follow up on these students after they, they, they've gone through their applications and they've traveled to other countries? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. this being our pilot for Akili Dada, yeah. uh, we're very eager to mm -hmm. follow them up. But mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we've had the privilege of having five of our own students yeah. access both the Yale Young African uh, Scholars Program and the global one which happens at the Yale campus. Mm -hmm. So we do track them and we do try and find out insights from them what, what did they like or what did they not like about mm -hmm. the experience because sometimes it's really also important to make sure a young person has their own choice and their own yes. experience to yeah. say actually don't want to go to New Haven because it snows and it's cold <laughs> or I want to go to Ashesi because it's in Ghana and it's hot yeah. and I like fufu so it's really important to also make sure young people have 
have have their voice mm -hmm. heard and that they're making this informed decision because some of them will be gone for four years uh, some some of our partners will help time. facilitate them mm -hmm. come home mm -hmm. every year maybe for the summer holidays but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, if funds are not allowing they'll be gone for four years and it's really important to make sure that they have a support system uh, wherever they decide yeah, that's to true. Mm -hmm. yeah. do you have any success stories that you could share with us Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just like Akili Dada, we also track our students' mm -hmm. progress. Um, we have had some of our students move on to Harvard University, mm -hmm. University of Rochester, Stanford University, um, UC Berkeley, um, Yale University. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are some of our success stories, and they are doing great. Mm -hmm. We had. Um, a number of our students graduate from Yale University this year as Ooh, well nice. and currently we have a number of them yeah. at Yale University mm -hmm. and one of our instructors who is here with us today mm -hmm. um, was a YAS participant mm -hmm. and she's now at Yale okay. University. Oh, yes. That's interesting. We'll have her later so mm -hmm. that she can tell us how the experience was for her. Um, do you have any particular challenges that you face? Maybe we can start with you. Yes. Um, you know, so because the target is high school students from all over Africa, mm -hmm. one of the challenges is language. Yeah. Um, sometimes we receive applications in French mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> um, English is the language we yeah. use throughout yeah. the program. And sometimes you have students who come, they submit applications in English, but they come and they struggle to express themselves in English. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is a challenge because you want them to benefit from the program. Yeah. But if they do not understand the English language, then you have a challenge. So mm -hmm. in cases like that, we have some of our instructors from Francophone countries who are able to, and even other students who are able to translate for, for yes. them. But obviously language is one challenge. Yeah. Yeah. What about about you, Kate? Any particular challenges? Um, uh, working with adolescent girls and now <laughs> boys is an uh, interesting uh, challenge, especially yeah. if you're not of that uh, age group. So mm -hmm. just also recognizing how they perceive the world is yeah. very different and sometimes a lot of conflict or misunderstanding or miscommunication from both the instructors and the student happen. So mm -hmm. it's really important to also try, we always say at Akildada, try and remember what advice would you give your 16 year old self so. to allow us to come down mm -hmm. to their level. Because yeah. sometimes maybe uh, they they will refuse to go to say for instance Yale and mm -hmm. me as an adult, I'm wondering why would you make that choice? <laughs> but maybe it's because she or the student has recognized that this is actually not what they want to pursue. Yes. But how they communicate that sometimes mm -hmm. really causes is a bit of challenge but also it's uh, sometimes parents and and teachers also yeah they don't want their children to go. yes mm -hmm. they don't and i think it's 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 something we've had we've suffered at akili dada where maybe a student has gotten a full scholarship to go elsewhere maybe her parents or her gatekeepers or mm -hmm. her teachers are scaring her and mm -hmm. telling her you know this is a country where there's a lot of gun issues and sometimes you create fear yeah. which is and unnecessary. it's a fully funded scholarship yes it's fully funded so oh sometimes it's that that anxiety parents have yeah. and that's why we're very intentional to make sure we Which program is understandable with teachers. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, make, it's intentional to program with teachers and parents just to also make sure we're all in the same stage. And so even if parents have anxieties, how can we help them manage them mm -hmm. so that they can support their, their students or their child to be able to access that. Yeah. So that's been a challenge, but we have found ways of trying to address it mm -hmm. by making sure we're having conversations with a girl and their gatekeepers to make yeah. sure that when the opportunity does come, all of us are in the same page. Yes. And then it's also just making sure that parents are proactively taking out travel documents for their children mm -hmm. because sometimes that has happened in the past where a student has a full scholarship but then the process documents. of taking it takes a long time yes. or the parent maybe doesn't have a birth certificate mm -hmm. and etc which causes a lot of delays in the system mm -hmm. yeah so what happens when um, a student turns, a, turns down a scholarship have you had that we have had that mm -hmm. it's a very painful experience mm -hmm. to go through because it um, it, it, it's potentially disastrous for the partnership with the university because yeah. in the future they mm -hmm. might see Akili Dada in, in the uh, student's application and be a bit skeptical. Mm -hmm. So we try as much as possible to be very open with our partners and just explain case by case why a student will not accept this scholarship. Yes. Uh, but then also what's happened in the past is a student maybe has turned down a scholarship because again society has forced her to take yeah. a certain cause and then mm -hmm. when she's going to say for instance 
do engineering in her third year she's she realized she wants to do music yes. and so again we are a feminist organization it's important that these young women self-actualize and mm -hmm. if music is what you set your soul on fire we will not force you to do engineering yes but then also how do we make sure you're able to actually know what you want to study mm -hmm. before exactly. you go That's is something that I we have to do to so what we do for mm -hmm. that is uh, in high school and just we have a gap year program so when students finish high school before they join university yeah. we have a lot of conversations with them about talent exploration and making sure that they know mm -hmm. what they're going to study uh, say for instance if someone wants to go and study law we make sure we partner you with either a law firm or you go and do uh, oh. internship or job shadowing in the judiciary mm -hmm. so that you can have the whole the experience of, yeah. of what exactly it looks like say for instance if you decide to be a litigant mm -hmm. uh, and in the past it's happened in very organic ways there's some students mm -hmm. who've gone to hospital they want to be doctors and they can't stand the smell of hospitals mm -hmm. they're like uh, I think this is how hospitals smell all over the world yeah so it's important that students have that experience and mm -hmm. just allowing our partners to allow students who don't have any credentials to come and job shadow so mm -hmm. that they can actually make an informed decision about the causes they're going to do okay yeah mm -hmm. do you follow up on um, the employment that they get maybe after graduation yeah um, so that is something we do, we track our students, mm -hmm. but um, yes, it's only six years now, mm -hmm. and because the target is high school students, we haven't had um, students, you know, move on to employment okay. yet, um, mm -hmm. because usually students have to have at least one year of high school left, mm -hmm. you know, before they get onto our program, and then they have four years of college, yes. and so we haven't really had our students move okay. on to the corporate world. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you had, you would actually we will follow track up them. on Just the as we are tracking um, their college you know, progress, we will track them, mm -hmm. you know, once they are done. And for these programs, you can study anything you want. You don't have to be forced to study maybe, considering that you are just taking those academically, mm -hmm. um, students who are very good academically. Mm -hmm. And definitely people have that assumption that when a student is academically good, they'll take those big courses, engineering, um, doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For us, we want you to decide mm -hmm. what you want to pursue. So we don't have a prescribed definition of what success looks like to yes. us. Uh, but at, as Akili Dada, we're really intentional to make sure that our students, uh, especially for this program, access universities and colleges. Mm -hmm. So whatever they go to, to study, for us, that's, we measure that as success. Mm -hmm. So we will not force a student, if she's gotten an A, mm -hmm. to take medicine or law or yeah. engineering. It's, it's what that self-actualization mm -hmm. and saying, I'm actually really good at painting, or I'm actually really good at literature, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pursue this and be really brilliant at, at what I decide to study. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So um, I just want us maybe to have just a few comments, the last few comments okay. from each of you as we welcome the student and the instructor so that we can finish up. Yeah, just maybe a few comments from your side or anything you'd want to add on to what we, we've talked about. Um, so I'd like to thank our sponsors, the mm -hmm. Hair Life Foundation, for sponsoring this program. They've been our partners for the last three years, mm -hmm. and we really appreciate them. And then I also want to encourage more students out there to apply. This mm -hmm. year, um, in October, we'll launch the application. It's a very competitive process. Um, mm -hmm. This year, we received application from over 5,000 students, oh, wow. and we selected only 300. So uh, it That's is a, a very lot. competitive <laughs> program. Yeah, um, yeah, Our acceptance rate is currently 5%, mm -hmm. and so I would encourage more students to apply and mm. put their best foot forward yeah. in the application. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, so at Akili Dada, we're really delighted for this partnership with uh, YAS and mm. we're really eager to see where this takes us. Uh, but just also to uh, comment to the students who might be watching this, uh, for us we are very um, alive to the fact that talent is universally distributed across the world but opportunity is not. And so let's make sure we try as much as possible to have the most far to reach student access these uh, opportunities. Yes. Yeah. So um, if we can have, just walk in. Yeah, so we'll be talking about the conference towards yes. the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just stand over there. Maybe one of you can come stand over sure. here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, um, if we can have a mic. So where will the conference be taking place? 
So the conference is currently taking place at the Mpesa Foundation, uh, which is in Thika. Uh, that's where we are able to host the 100 students plus the 60 educators. So mm -hmm. that's where it's currently. It started on the 7th of August and it will be running until the 14th. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so thank you. We have the instructor and the student on set with us, so I'll just start with you. Kindly introduce yourself and tell us which part you play with the YAS. Sure, um, my name is Phyllis. Mm -hmm. I'm from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. um, I was a YAS participant in 2015, back, back when, when the program, program was much smaller and had 50, 50 students. Mm -hmm. I then went on to do the Yale Young Global Scholars Program on Yale's campus. Mm -hmm. I am now currently a student at Yale studying engineering. Okay. Um, and I came back to um, the YAS family as a, YY, a Yale and African Scholar Instructor, and I'm also a Yale Young Global Scholar Instructor. Mm -hmm. okay. So I've sort of gone around the full circle. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So how how has the experience been for you going around the full circle from the student mm -hmm. to the instructor and to studying now for that year? Mm -hmm. So um, my journey did begin at the Yale on African Scholars Program mm -hmm. and the first stage is all about exposure to things I would have previously not known. Mm -hmm. um, I've always known that I loved applied science but I've also always known that I wanted to be more than just an engineer because growing up as a Southern African child, you were either a doctor, an engineer, an accountant, or a failure. <laughs> so, um, and, and I've always known that there were other interests that I had that I couldn't probably express out loud to my family. Mm -hmm. um, so getting to the Yale Young African Scholars Program taught me about something known as a liberal arts college, um, which is where you can major in your degree, mm -hmm. but you can also take classes in psychology, in philosophy, in other interests you may have had or may have not known that you had. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was when I decided that my next step would probably be considering a university in America. Mm -hmm. um, I then attended the Yale Young Global Scholars Program mm -hmm. where I actually got to be on Yale's campus and experience being a college student in the US for the first time. And that's when all my options, all roads just pointed to <laughs> applying to the US and I made it to Yale University um, and I thought and I, I thought back to what it was like for me back before I even knew about the Young African Scholars Program and what you know how many other students were in the same situation where they do not know the kind of opportunities that are out there um, and so I really thought it was important for me to come back mm -hmm. as an instructor um, sort of come back and give back um, and just serve other students who were like me before just so they can be exposed to this. Okay. Just so they can have a different narrative as well, just like I did. Yeah. There. Yes, okay. so um, we'll get back to you. First of all, I'd like her to introduce herself. Could you just pass the mic to her? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Fouzia El Hajj, and I'm 17. I'm from Sudan. And um, so the, yeah, I'm. The first time I've heard of like this whole uh, program and the CL program was through my counselor. And the reason why he pointed this out was because usually in like our region and uh, in this area and a lot of the things that I don't know is that uh, we don't usually have programs like this and we don't know much of summer programs, but then typical like high school students in the United States and in different uh, areas of the world are exposed to such um, opportunities and programs where they come together. And yeah, basically. So how has the experience been for you? Uh, the experience so far has been amazing and has been like uh, brilliant. It's something that I've never like tried before because one of the main things that I've seen in this program is how we came from different areas in Africa and all of us came together to this new exposure where we're learning about our different cultures and different people, different stories. And through that exposure, you get to know more about the continent itself mm -hmm. and about uh, all these yeah, different things. And another as like aspect about this whole program and something that I really uh, find great and helpful is the fact that uh, the program itself introduces you to the, like, the application system mm -hmm. in other universities and mostly the United States. So once you enter this program, you uh, get guidance from those who have been there before and have also been accepted and or have gone to these universities. So if you have any questions and any advice for such uh, concerns or anything that you don't know of, yeah, you, so you're exposed to like people who know a lot. And the third thing which I really like about this um, program 
is the fact that one of the focuses is leadership. And as seen in Africa and um, all around the different nations, we have a bit of a small weakness in like leadership. And since we haven't been exposed to like a lot of training and all these different uh, things, yeah? So um, one of the main focuses is to build leadership within every character and confidence. So then after we leave the program, we become the leaders that Africa wants to see for like the next generations mm -hmm. and for the upcoming future. Mm -hmm. So what is your goal uh, at the end of it all? In the end of it all, like mm -hmm. long term? Or yes, just long term. Okay, so my goal is, um, I come from Sudan, right? So my goal is to go study university in the United States most likely. And after I do so, I would also like to come back to like my country. And because I feel like there's a lot of work to be like done there, although, and then we need those who have all these opportunities and are educated in ways where some other people are put in current situations where the same things aren't um, available for them to come back and like also like give back and um, to work with like such, yeah, to work with people and all of that kind of. Challenges that you've had? Um, uh, yeah. So one of the challenges I've had is like um, being exposed to like a different, a com like completely different culture from mine and all that. I've, <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to adapt to it. Like for example, I come to the cafeteria, there's different food, I've never tried that before. Or like, um, like the different languages, different, um, and also, uh, yeah, like different stories, different people. So some things I'm like, oh, I, I really don't know what that is. But like, so I'm slowly learning over time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. At least we have someone who yeah. has that experience to talk to other people. Yeah. So let's get back to you. If you could just pass the mic to her. Thank you. So what is the key point, since you're an, an instructor, what are the key points that you pass to the other young women and young men who are in the program? The key point I like to get across is um, there is not only one story. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of them look at us because all of the instructors for the Yale Young African Scholars Program do go to Yale. Um, if your end goal isn't Yale, mm -hmm. that is okay. Um, and there's many different ways of getting to the goals that you have set for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we all have different narratives, we all have different stories, we're all coming from different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, all share an ultimate goal. Um, we all want to make the same sort of positive impact. Mm -hmm. It's just the ways we get there are different and that is okay. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these students are extremely talented. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is a 5% acceptance rate. It is an extremely um, competitive program. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have made it to a program such as the Yale Young African Scholars, mm -hmm. there's so much more that they can achieve. And so for them, it's really looking at themselves as individuals, looking at their own individual strengths. Mm -hmm. My role is just simply to help them discover what that is and to help them get to where they want to be, um, we don't set that goal for them. We just help guide them through that entire process. So have you had any students who have gone through the program successfully? As an instructor? Through the Yale African Scholars yeah, Program? Yeah, and maybe gone to universities out there? Yes, so um, this is my first year as an instructor for the Yale Young African Scholars Program, but I was an instructor for the Yale Young Global Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. um, I have mentor mentored several students with the application process. I have read countless essays, um, and I have seen a lot of success stories. Um, students do get to where they need to go. Um, and just, I've been extremely enlightened just working with them throughout this process mm -hmm. um, because they don't realize and a lot of the times it's weird that they don't acknowledge how great they actually are um, and sort of being with them through that experience when they from the application process to realizing how great they are to them actually achieving these goals is just probably one of the best parts of being an instructor yeah. yes during the program it's great to actually interact with them but continuing to follow up with them and keep track with them and seeing you know the goals they set back when they were a participant to actually achieving those goals in college is probably the most fulfilling part of being okay. an instructor. Uh -huh. Since now you're in Kenya, I want you just to talk to the young people who are watching you right now and tell them why it is important, as we wind up, why it is important for them to apply to that particular program. Use that camera. Sure, um, so I guess to all the young people out there, um, it is 2019 and our generation has extremely complex problems that we are facing. And we need 
interdisciplinary approaches to tackle these problems. We need to really understand what the core of these problems are. And I think a program like the Young African Scholars that brings together students from all across the continent is extremely important because at the end of the day, we need to learn from each other. Um, we need to adapt methods that you know work in other countries and maybe we could bring them to our own. Um, we need to be exposed to instructors from all around the world um, because their solutions with our indigenous minds could be the key to sort of unlocking um, the answers to the problems we are facing. Um, is what I guess I would tell all the young people out there. So please do apply um, if you do get the opportunity. And I would love to at some point meet you guys as a Yale Young African Scholar. Thank you. Um, so Lucy, um, I'd like you maybe to share um, maybe a, um, a platform where people can apply mm. if they wanted to apply. Yes. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, sometime in October we'll launch the application for next year. Mm -hmm. They just have to go onto the website, Yale Young African Scholars Program, mm -hmm. um, and um, they'll see the application. If mm -hmm. you have any questions, you can also email african.scholars at yale.edu. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes, and to you, Kate, now that you are the, the organization that is partnering in Kenya, yes. tell them where they can apply for Akili Dada and also for the YAS. Absolutely. Uh, for anyone who's watching, both mm -hmm. teachers and the students, as I mentioned, we are running an educators conference as well. Please feel free to reach out to info at akilidada.org. We will put a hyperlink to Yale's page once the application in October goes live. Uh, please subscribe to our weekly opportunity because every week we also send opportunities. So if you're subscribed, you will definitely reach uh, the application process when it does get live. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to you finally, if you can just pass the mic. Just your final thoughts and your final comments. Uh, my final thoughts are that you should, uh, all students out there, you should really apply for this program because I've only been here for like three days, but the amount of different, uh, the new things that I've been exposed to are like, are countless and unbelievable. So yeah, they're amazing. So I think that don't hesitate. You can apply. And if you don't believe in yourself, just go for it. It's not, yeah, it's, it's no, there's no harm to it. Yeah so much ladies for making time to come and share the important information with us and we wish you all the best yeah <laughs> so as you've heard from these beautiful ladies there are so many opportunities out there for you you just need to take that step and apply more of isakut coming your way so don't you go anywhere <laughs>